So this video is looking at stages of skill acquisition. This is our first dot point uh, for how does the acquisition of skill affect performance. So our major learning goal is for us to understand the judgment of skill and how the stages of skill acquisition, the characteristics of the learner and the environment impact on skill performance. Now, to go with our major goal, we also have our major success criteria for this critical question, and that's to evaluate the various methods of judgment and explain the impact of the stages of skill acquisition, the characteristics of the learner, and the environment on performance. Now, of course, for this dot point, uh, the stages of skill acquisition, our learning goals are for you to uh, know the three stages of skill acquisition and for you to learn a new skill. Now obviously this video is not going to teach you a new skill, but I am going to talk to you about the three stages of skill acquisition. Our success criteria for these learning goals are for you to be able to describe three stages of skill acquisition, uh, for you to explain how a person moves along the skill acquisition continuum, and for you to be able to perform a new skill at the associative to autonomous stage. So hopefully you'll uh, learn that. Uh, in class. Our learn about here uh, says stages of skill acquisition and there are three different stages that you need to learn. The first stage is the cognitive stage, the second stage is the associative stage and the third stage and final stage is the autonomous stage. The learn to that goes with this learn about is for you to examine the stages of skill acquisition by participating in the learning of a new skill, for example juggling or throwing with a non-dominant arm. Now, Obviously, again, not teaching you those skills, but uh, we're going to focus on the learn about in this video. Now, the cognitive stage of skill acquisition is the first stage. It is the stage that uh, refers to all of your mental processing and your thinking. So the word cognitive actually means mind. It's about your psychology. Uh, it's about your brain functioning. And so in the cognitive stage, this is where mental processes are involved and the athletes are constantly thinking about the skill. Uh, they're thinking about what they're doing, what movements, what muscles they do, where do they need to put their foot. Uh, if they're doing something like throwing, they actually, they're going to think about exactly what they're doing as they try and throw that ball, that object. Uh, they're going to have large, frequent errors. Uh, their movement's going to be quite jerky, really robotic. Okay, and if you try and throw with your non-dominant arm, you'll probably notice that actually uh, you're going to shift into being cognitive again when you're thinking about your throwing uh, and it's going to look nice and jerky with lots of errors. During this stage, uh, a coach uh, needs to provide lots and lots of feedback. Uh, they need to do demonstrations uh, and they need to make sure that the athlete is getting plenty of comments about, yeah, that's good, put your foot there, uh, yeah, that's looking better. Uh, push through a bit harder, whatever it happens to be, the coach needs to be providing plenty of feedback. At this point, uh, the athlete themselves is not very capable of providing their own feedback. Uh, the last thing in terms of this stage is that in terms of their development and the types of practice that they need, they need really frequent short periods of exposure. Uh, this is always really the best way to learn a new skill is short frequent exposure, so maybe 20 to 30 minutes uh, three to five times a week, so that they're really developing that skill. Now, as the athlete progresses in their skill development, they'll then shift from the cognitive stage into the associative stage. Now, the associative stage is the stage where the athlete does lots and lots of practice and they're going to really develop their skills uh, quite quickly. Now, here the athlete's going to shift their thinking from thinking about what they're actually doing to starting to think about the end result of their performance. Uh, they can start to give themselves a bit more feedback because they're going to watch their performances in terms of uh, the results and see what they, whether or not they can kick the ball into the target or whether they, when they pass the ball it goes to where it's meant to be. That gives them their feedback that they need. Their movement becomes more fluid and smooth as well. It stops being so jerky and robotic. Uh, the errors are not as large or as frequent. And of course that shifts along the continuum. We're not talking about you're in this stage and then you're in that stage. We're talking about a, a slow progression through uh, a continuum here. And so they're going to slowly increase as they move along the associative stage, they're going to get less and less errors, and those errors are going to get smaller and smaller. Though external feedback is still going to be more beneficial for them. Uh, here they're going to do lots and lots of practice, probably whole practice and matched practice. So that means they're going to do lots of practice at once and practicing the entire skill uh, at the same time. The associative stage in particular lasts a very long time. So some athletes will never actually progress out of the associative stage into the autonomous stage. 
Uh, they stay in the associated space, but they're just constantly practicing and they actually don't become automatic uh, where they can start to think about other aspects uh, of their performance at the same time. So as we've shifted now, they're moving along the continuum from the uh, cognitive stage down here and they're moving the whole way along through the associative and across now to the autonomous stage. Uh, in the autonomous stage, uh, the athlete is no longer thinking about the skill at all. It's now becoming more natural to them. They've really they've developed that those neural pathways which enable them to uh, perform that movement without having to think about it. Uh, they can start to focus on other aspects of competition. Uh, so they might be dribbling the ball and uh, see a defender coming at them and then can think about uh, whether they should pass it, try and beat the defender, uh, where the space is, all those types of things. Uh, so they're thinking about competition aspects rather than just the actual performing of the skill. Uh, athletes in the autonomous stage can very easily provide themselves with their own feedback, both using their uh, proprioception, where uh, they understand where their body is and what the movement feels like. And so if the movement uh, they perform and they feel like it's off, then generally it is off, and that's providing them that uh, automatic, really quick feedback that helps them to correct their performance uh, straight away. And obviously they also get their, um, to see their results as well. Uh, their errors are gonna be very rare and very minor errors. Uh, so you know you might be taking that penalty kick uh, and you might just miss that top right hand corner uh, but generally speaking you will get it in the goal most of the time. Okay? Uh, your coaches during this point are actually going to start to focus on the other aspects of performance and not so much on the skill. So they might start looking at how to perform the skill under pressure, uh, when you need to pass, when you need to beat the player, uh, when do you need to do uh, different things according to what's going on in the game. Uh, that's what your coach is going to start to focus on as they're teaching the skill in the autonomous stage. So at this point, I want you to really think about the fact that this is a continuum. It's very important for you to understand that uh, the cognitive stage, the athlete will slowly progress, uh, their, their movements will slowly become more fluid, uh, they'll start to lose that robotic nature, they'll start to do less and less errors that are, begin to get smaller and smaller. And as they progress through the associative stage, those errors continue to shrink, uh, the movement continues to get uh, more fluid, more refined, uh, more technical in its execution. And then once they get to the autonomous stage, they're now no longer thinking about the skill, uh, the movement is very fluid, uh, and the athlete can actually begin to adapt uh, the performance of that skill uh, to what's in front of them. So for example, a basketball player who's about to shoot a jump shot and gets fouled can automatically adjust their shot uh, to their foul to increase their chances of scoring that shot.